you know, this month we've been talking about visioning, which is one of our second sacred practices here. And the theme for the month, as you know, is explosive blessings. And I hope you guys have gotten used to it by now. Explosive <laughs> blessings. We want those blessings that burst forth, that just break through everything. And we know that explosive doesn't have to be a bad word. Particularly when we're talking about blessings. We want those blessings to explode. And we can do that, and they can do that, when we are letting go and letting God open up. And as I said, during this month, we've been talking about visioning. And visioning is a meditative practice, as you know, that allows us to get into a state where we can be at one with God and where we can be in a place where we can catch God's plan for our lives. Because God has a plan for everything. God has a plan for itself as everything. God has a plan for itself as each one of us. God has a plan for how it wants to show up as a blade of grass, as a flower, as whatever. And God has a plan for how it wants to show up as each of us. And so as we go through our lives, and I, as we go through these times, and I talk about vision, and I talk about our purpose for being here, is to be be, be revealers of God's love, to be vehicles for God's love. And how we do that is what we learn in visioning. When we're catching God's vision for our lives, when we're catching God's vision, we know God will show us exactly how it wants to show up as whatever it is we are, as whoever it is we are, as how, how it wants to be through each of us. But we have, to, we have to open up, we have to be available, we have to be willing to receive that information that is right there right there for each of us to grasp. And this is what we're doing. We're learning again how to do visioning. And I remind you again that visioning is not a time of planning. It's not a time to sit down and say, oh, let me see what I want to do for this meeting. Let me vision. And then you sit down and you get up and say, oh, this is what I got in vision and you write it out. That's not the way it works. The way it works is to just find out what God's idea is. Find out what God's idea is for a meeting, for a project, for a marriage, for a relationship, for this community that we have here, or for whatever it is that we're visioning for. And then the, the, the biggest thing that happens in visioning is that we have to let go and let go. That's the biggest thing. We're so used to controlling everything. We're so used to managing our lives. We're so, so used to getting into the how things happen that we don't want to deal with the what. Because once the what starts coming through, the first thing we want to know is, well, how's that going to happen? Well, how am I going to do that? And sometimes we even ask, how's God going to do that? That's not our business, the how. Our business is the what, is to find out what the vision is, catch the heart spirit. Catching God's vision. What, how does God want to show up as me? What does God want to look like as me? What does God see it? How does God see itself as me? That's what we want to know. That's what we want to know. And so that's what we're opening up to. That's what we're, we're, we've been doing all month. If you recall the first, the first Sunday that we were dealing with visioning, I was reminding you that visioning is different from visualization. In visualization, we already know what we want, so we put it on the vision board or have it in our minds, and then we focus on that. Very powerful, really can bring many, many things into manifestation. In visioning, we have no idea what we want. We're just open and receptive and trusting God to reveal it to us. And so the first question that comes up is, and we've been talking about since we're doing it as a community, as, as congregants, as individuals, we've been talking about life's purpose vision. How does God, what is God's vision for my life? What is God's vision for your life? What is God's vision for our individual lives? And there are the same questions we ask, whether we're visioning for creating a fellowship, or for a project, or for, as I said, a relationship, or for our health. We can vision for everything, for anything and everything. And so the question, the first question we ask, what is God's vision? For my life. And, and, and we go into the specifics of what does that vision look like? How does it sound? Does it have a smell? Does it have a taste? Because when we get into uh, uh, the, the five senses, 
we are more in tune sometimes to hear, to see, to touch, to feel. And so asking those questions opens us up even more to be in tune with the all that is, with that inner knower. That's what, that's what visioning does. It puts us in tune with the inner knower. That which knows everything already. And so that's the first question. The second question is, what must I become? This is what we dealt with the second week. What must I become? So that God's vision can be made manifest in my life. So we were going through that process of what must I become? Because obviously if we didn't have to become something, we'd already be revealing God's vision. What must I become includes the questions, how must I change and grow? How must I change? How must I grow? Because if something didn't need to change, we would already be there. So we open ourselves up to that. How many people have been doing the vision since we, since we started back at the beginning of March? Great. And I hope that you will continue and that more of you will really start to practice visioning, practice getting in tune with, getting in, into alignment with the all that is. Because you know, I tell you all the time, and I say all the time, that the only thing that ever needs to be healed is our sense of separation from God. Our sense of separation from God is the only thing that ever needs to be healed. We can never be separate from God, but we can think that we are separate. We can have a sense of separation, and then we start to act like we're separate. And then we move into the them and us forms. And then we do all kinds of stuff that shows separation, or belief in separation. There is no separation except in our own minds. And so the more we do our spiritual practice, the more we do those things that bring us into the presence, those things that return us unto God, the more we do those things, the more we are opening up, the more we are opening up, the more we are opening up to reveal the allness and the fullness of God in our own lives. And that's what it's all about, learning to reveal the allness and the fullness of God in our own lives. And so this week, the question that we're going to be asking, the third question is, what must I release in order to create a space for God's vision? What must I let go? Hmm. What must I release? Let's take a breath. First of all, release your breath. <laughs> what must I release? What do I need to let go? And you know, sometimes the, the, the easy things come to mind, like anger and judgment and unforgiveness and blame and shame and guilt and that stuff. Fear is a big one. Fear is a big one. Fear of change. Fear of letting go of the past. Fear of moving forward, fear of doing something different. And when we get fearful, we hold on. And when we hold on, we become resistant. And as we become more and more resistant, then we close off more. And when we close off more, there's no way that God can work through us. Because God can only work through an open heart. God can only work through an opening. And God is ever seeking an opening in which it can express itself. And it cannot express through a closed heart. It cannot explode, it express through a closed consciousness. It cannot express through closed anything. It's just always seeking an opening, always seeking an opening, always seeking an opening, always seeking that opening. We can be that place that space, that opening. And we can do that through our vision, through our spiritual practice, and visioning in particular. So in order to be in that place, in order to be that opening, in order to be that, 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 that place and space where, where God really, really, really wants to really express itself, we have to release something. We have to release something that may be blocking. We have to release whatever it is we may be resisting. There are a lot of changes going on and have been going on in this community for the last eight, nine months now. A lot of change. A lot of change, a lot of transitions, a lot of apparent loss, and a lot of good stuff too. But it's still change. And I don't know how, how I don't care how much we want good stuff to happen, we don't want to change to get it. <laughs> we just want to stay the same, but I want it to change. I want it to be just like we used to do, but I want things to change. 
I want to do whatever. I want to lose 20 pounds, but I don't want to stop eating whatever it is I'm going to really like. <laughs> I won't say what it is. But <laughs> All those things we want to be different, but we want to be different without checking. I scream so it is. Now that you know that, uh, and blue fortune. <laughs> but anyway, we have to be willing to let things go. We have to be willing to let go of the past. We have to be willing to let go of those things that don't serve us. We have to be willing to think a different way. We have to be willing to see, see the world in a different way. We have to be willing to see ourselves in a different way. We have to be willing to see ourselves in a way we don't know ourselves. We know who we think we are. And we move through the world according to who we think we are. We have to be willing to let go of who we think we are so that we can be all that God created us to be. So that God can show up however he wants to show up as us. And that's so much better than, than we could ever be on our own. I'm just always so glad that God is so much smarter than I am. <laughs> Even though there are times when I, you know, fight about it. But God is so much smarter than I am, thank God. <laughs> and when we recognize that, then, then we can stop the fight, stop the resistance. Stop the holding on to the past so that more and more and more can be expressed in and through and as our very lives. In this community, the more we can release and let go of the past, then we can open up and create a space for more and more and more to be expressed, for more God to be expressed, expressed and for more explosive blessings to happen in this community. That's what it's all about. Explosive blessings always happening. So what must I release? What must I let go? One of the things I have to say to you about visioning before we actually get into the process is that it requires a lot of trust. Because it's not a slow process. I'm sorry, it's not a fast process. It can be a slow process. It, because you know what, it's unfolding. And as things unfold, they don't just walk down like this. Sometimes they do. But it's an evolutionary process, an evolutionary process. We're constantly growing. We're constantly expanding. Things are constantly being revealed. And one thing about God's vision, it's not stagnant. It's not stagnant at all. It's, it's very dynamic. It's ever evolving, ever revealing itself. And so the thing for us to do in our work is to always be open and always be open, opening up even more, creating a bigger space for more and more and more to be revealed in and through and at Breathe with me. That's what we want to do. And so we, we open up more and more by just releasing more and more of the resistance that we may have. And letting go of our fear of trusting. Trusting the inner knower to, more, to know more than we do, to know how it's going to be done. You know, we, we practice trust throughout our lives, but we trust those things we can see. We, you know, we trust that our cars are going to work. We trust that, we trust the gas they put in our cars, we trust the food source, we trust the water source, we trust all those things. Because somehow we you can see those things because so the people who are controlling those things, we trust them. But that which we cannot see, it's a little bit harder to trust. It's a little bit harder to trust. My teacher, Michael Bradley, says that when we can believe more in what you don't see than what you do see, then what you do see, you won't see, and what you don't see, you will see. When you can believe more in what you don't see than what you do see, then what you do see, you won't see, and what you don't see, you will see. <laughs> In other words, trust God more than you trust anything else or anybody else. And that's the message for today. Trust God more than you trust anybody or anything else. And when we move into that place of trust, openness and trust, and knowing that we can trust God more than any 
person, place, or thing, then what we don't see will be we will believe more in what we don't see than what we do see. Then what we do see, we won't see. And what we don't see, we will see. So let's just turn with them now in this moment as we go through this process of vision. Can we have some traveling music over here? Thank you. So let's take a breath. allowing ourselves to be in that place of knowing and sensing and feeling God's presence right here right now. question is, what must I become in order to be in alignment with God's vision for my life? What must I become? We are ever becoming. question that we're focusing on today is what must I release in order to create a space for God's vision of itself as my life? What must I let go? Rest in that question. What must I release? serving me in my life. Take a breath as you just allow God to reveal what it is you must let go in order to be in alignment. What 
must now release and let go. How does that trust and turn it over? Take a few notes that you can use to jog your memory once you get home or whatever that you can write even more. And the wonderful thing about vision is it doesn't happen just in the place where we are doing the actual vision. God is constantly revealing itself. God is constantly revealing to us that which we ask, that which we are open to. And so be aware as you go through this day, as you go through this week, as you go through your lives, be aware that the vision is ever unfolding. It's dynamic, it's ever unfolding, it's ever being revealed. And we want to be ever open to catch it. Don't discount anything. You don't have to analyze it. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to figure out how or why. Just be, be with it. It will change your life. So as we just continue breathing now, moving in, in this consciousness that's been established already here, let's just move into prayer now. Move into that place where we continue to know and sense and feel God's presence right here, right now, right where we are. Just 
knowing that this presence is my very life, knowing this presence is the only presence, the only life, the only mind, the only breath. It's God. My very life is this onlyness. And this same onlyness that is my life is the life of each of us here this day. It is the source of us all. And whatever we choose to call it, it is the source of our being. We can call it God. We can call it one. We don't have to call it anything. Doesn't change it. But it's the source of all. And so this fullness and this fullness that is God being right here where I am right now allows me to speak this word for each of us this day. Just speaking a word of release and freedom as we let go of those things that don't serve. We let go of the past that we've been holding on to. We let go of, of resistance. We let go of the fear and the doubt and the anxiety. We let go of needing to know why or how. And as we let go, we move into that place of trust. Trust in God more than anyone, right? We move into that place of faith. We move into that place of God. And all the qualities of God are right here in this place. Love and peace and joy and harmony and balance and courage. Forgiveness and compassion and so much more. And so I speak a word of freedom for us because freedom is what we experience in this place of God. We are constantly walking in God. We walk in the love of God. We live in God. We live and move and have our being in God. And God lives and moves and has his being in each of us. How good it is to know this truth. That contained within this fullness, this fullness, is everything we could need or desire. All needs are met in this place and space. All needs are met. All challenges are met and dissolved. There is peace and peace of mind here. This is where we rest. This is our place of refuge. This word goes out to anyone on this planet here in prayer this day, knowing that right where each of them is, the power and presence of God is. <laughs> Open this circle of prayer and I pause momentarily so that you may speak the names of anyone you'd like held in prayer this day. You may speak their names silently or loud and you may speak them now. And so to all those whose names were spoken here this day, I know that God is. Blessing and keeping them, just as God is right here. God is everywhere present. And so I just say, thank you, Father, Father God. Thank you, Father, Father God. Thank you, infinite intelligence, infinite presence. Divine Mother, thank you. I just allow it to be now. And so it is.